Good evening, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Praise God for allowing us to come into your homes once again. We pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. I want to thank each and every one of you who showed love and appreciate appreciation to Pastor Davis and myself on this past Sunday as we celebrated our 16th year appreciation. It was a good day. God held back the rain. I came out of my house and I enjoyed a beautiful afternoon. I was so excited just to be outside. I want to thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love that you showed us and also your financial blessings. I pray that God will bless you and keep you safe as you continue to show blessings to others. Our scripture tonight will come from Revelation 4, 9 through 11. Revelations 4, 9 through 11. And it reads, Whenever the living beings give glory and honor and thanks to the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down and worship the one sitting on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever. And they lay their crowns before the throne and they say, you are worthy, O Lord, our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and they exist because you created what you pleased. If you just let your mind think about this God that we serve, we realize that God is a merciful God and he is worthy to receive all honor and praise. So regardless of what you're going through, God is still on the throne and he is to be worshiped. Our song is, we worship you, O Lord. We worship you, O Lord. You are worthy to be praised and adored. We magnify your name. We worship you. We worship you, O Lord. We worship you.
Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we come. Lord, we thank you again for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. Now, Lord, we praise you, Father God, for you are worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And for that, Lord, we magnify you. We glorify your name. We lift you, Father God, for you are worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us tonight. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for falling short. Now, Lord, bless us in your word, that your word will go forth, and that men will fall out with their evil ways, that life will roll on a little, long, little while longer, and that we, Father God, will run and tell men, women, boys, and girls about the Jesus we serve, and who he is, and what he's doing in our lives. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise, allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen, and thank God. Yes, Lord. You are worthy to be praised and adored. We magnify you. You are worthy to be praised and adored. We magnify your name. You are worthy to be praised and adored. We magnify Hallelujah. We ought to magnify him, for he is worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. We ought to thank God, thank God for who he is and what he has already done in our lives. Amen. Let me call your attention again to Colossians chapter 3. The book is Colossians, the chapter is 3. We'll be looking at verses 5 through 11 tonight. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11 is where we will be looking on tonight. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11 is where we will, we will land on tonight. We honor God and we praise God for who he is and what he's already done. Again, as Sister Davis has said, thank you so much for honoring us on this weekend, this past Sunday. Thank you for a great time in the Lord. Because of COVID-19, we have come to a point where we have to meet outside, wave at the cars as they pass by. Thank God for a drive through and not a drive by. Thank you so much to all of you who participated, all of you who have sent your love in one way or the other. Thank you again for being a part of that great celebration. 16 wonderful years that God has allowed us to participate with the New Beginning Church and God has blessed us. Colossians chapter three, verses five through 11. When we look at Colossians chapter 3, Paul began in the first portion of this pericope. The greater part of this pericope goes from chapter chapter 3, verse 1 through verse number 11. Uh, we, did, we dealt with the first portion of that pericope on last week when we dealt with verses 1 through 4. So today we will, we will deal with uh, verses 5 through 11 to complete this particular pericope. When we look at it, you will find uh, God's word written very clearly in there. You will find God's word. And uh, Paul is speaking, and as Paul is speaking to us, he, he's letting us know in verses 1 through 4 that we are somebody in Christ Jesus. He says we have been raised with Christ. We have been raised with Christ in such a way that God has blessed us, and we ought to focus on those things in Christ Jesus as who he is and who we are in Christ Jesus. So Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 through 4 deals with the fact that we are to focus on that, those things which are above. Take our minds off the things that are on planet earth. It's a, it's a moment in our lives once we're saved that we ought to focus on things that are above, not on things that are beneath. We are to always focus on Jesus Christ on heavenly things, on the fact that God has raised us with Christ. Before we were born again, we were earthly, we were natural, we were, we were not saved, we were just like we were when we showed up on planet earth. We were, we were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. But now we look at the fact 
that Paul tells us that since we are raised with Christ, we ought to seek those things which are above and not those things which are below. He addresses the fact that Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. And he's sitting there and he's making intercession for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. He's making intercession. I'm telling you, when we sin, when we fall short, God is making intercessions for us. Jesus is making intercessions to God for us. God, Jesus, the son of God, God's son, God's only begotten son, God's only unique son is sitting on the right hand of the father, even today, making intercessions for us. Yes, he is. As we confess our sins, as we go before God and say, God, I have fallen short. I have sinned. I've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. I have messed up. As we confess our sin, 1 John 1 and 9 says that as we confess our sins, God is faithful and God is just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus Christ is our lawyer. He's our attorney. He is the one that's pleading our case for us. Mm -hmm. The text says he's sitting on the right hand of God. Verse number two says, set your mind on things above, not on things above on the earth. Get focused, get focused, get focused, get your head in. Uh, the coaches used to say, get your head in the game. In, the, in right field, left field, center field, guys would get kind of bored out there in the outfield because not many balls were coming out there. And all of a sudden, a ball is hit in the outfield. And when that ball is hit in the outfield, if your head is not in the game, you just miss the pop fly out. You just missed a, a home run. You just missed a, a double play because your head wasn't in the game. Let me tell you, Jesus is saying to us, get our heads on heavenly things. Get our minds focused. Get our minds on things above, not things on earth. He says in verse 3, for you died and your life is now hidden in Christ, hidden with Christ in God. You have, the old you is dead now. That's why you can say, if it had been the old me, I would have done it like this. But you are no longer the old you. You shouldn't do it like that. You, are, you ought to realize that you are hidden with Christ in God. Verse 4 says, when Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory talks about the rapture. What he's saying is we ought to get our mind focused on heavenly things because the promise is Jesus is coming back. I know, I realize it doesn't look like, <laughs> like, the, like God is winning. Yeah. It doesn't look like Jesus is ever coming back. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you tonight, mm -hmm. Jesus is coming back. Yes, he is. And when he comes back, he's coming back to get a church without a spot or a wrinkle. He's coming back to get a church that is focused on heavenly things. He's coming back to get a church whose mind is made up that Jesus is the son of God, that he's died for their sins. He rose, he has risen from the dead. He's sitting on the right hand of the father. And when he comes back, he's going to bring the saints of God with him. Those who have died in Christ, he's going to bring him, them with him. The Bible says the trump of God at the trump of God, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 15, at the sound of the trump of God, at the voice of the archangel, Jesus Christ will crack the sky. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Those who are dead shall rise first. He says, Don't you be worried. Don't you be ignorant. Don't you be uninformed. Those loved ones who have died in Christ, they shall rise first. Yes, Lord. And those of us who remain walking on planet Earth, sleeping on planet Earth, will be caught up with them in mid our glory. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And verse 4 says we're going to be with them. First Thessalonians chapter 4 ends that, that pericope in 13 through verses 13 through 14 by saying, and comfort one another with these words. We will forever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. So it leads us up to verse number five, Colossians chapter three, verse number five. He's shown us 
where to put our hearts. He's shown us where to put our minds on heavenly things, how to think, how to know who you are. No Christian has any room for low self-esteem. You have to know for a fact you are somebody in Jesus Christ. So Paul has shown us on last week, verses 1 through 4, to keep your mind focused on heavenly things. Now he says in verse number 5 through 11, he says, not only should you be focused, but you ought to be living it. <laughs> Look at what he says. He says, therefore put off death. Put to death, rather. He says, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. He says, put this stuff to death. And then he's going to call the roll. This is one of your in-the-face messages Paul gives to the Colossian church. He, he gets in their faces. And let me tell you, sometimes the preacher has to get in your face. Sometimes the preacher has to point out your sin. Yeah, he's a man just like you are. Yes, he put on his pants just like you do. But the fact of the matter is, the man of God is called of God to give you the word of God. Look at what the word says. He says, therefore, put to death. This phrase, put to death, means mortify. This word, put to death, means to kill it off. This word, put to death, Need, means to do it and do it absolutely right now. He says, put to death your members which are on the earth. Mm -hmm. Then he goes into a lengthy, uh, a lengthy list of what these things are. Let's go through it. Fornication. First of all, when he deals with fornication in this particular verse, he's not talking about sexual activity only between a man and a woman who's not married. He's not only talking about uh, fornication uh, with a man and a woman who's not married. He's also talking about adultery. He is speaking about, you know, we, we define fornication as sexual activity between a man and a woman who's not married. But in this particular Greek term, he's talking about all kinds of immoral all kinds of immoral sexual activity. He's talking about, he's talking about sex between those who are not married. He's, he's talking about those who are adulterous. He's talking about those who, who find themselves at a point in their lives where they have all kind of pervertedness when it comes to sexuality. Paul says, put it to death. My, 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 he says, but he, look, at he's just in their faces. In the, go ahead and clap your hand, raise your hand and shout hallelujah. Thank God for the word of God. Th thank God for who he is and what God has done. So he says, put away fornication. Then he goes on and say, put away not just all immorality when it's in this in, impurity uh, of sexual activity. He says, put away uncleanness. Mm -hmm. This includes lust. This, in, this, this fornication includes lust and uncontrolled uh, activity of passions. Put it all away. Put it to death. And then he says, uncleanness. Your, un, put away your passions, your evil desires. Put it away. Put it to death. Mortify it. Kill it off. He told us who we are in Christ Jesus. And now he's telling us how to live as we are in Christ Jesus. So he says, put it away. Put it off. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Passions. Passions that are out of control. Bring it, bring it under control. Uh, get your lust under control. Then he, he says to us, not only should we get it under control, but this evil desires, these cravings in this, this greediness. When he says covetousness, this greediness, we got to get this stuff under control. We got, and let me just be the first one to tell you, it's not a cakewalk in the park. Let me be the first one to tell you that it's not something you can just wake up in the morning and say, hey, I'm done. But I will say it's not a 12-step solution either. As you walk with God, God is able to bless you 
and to a point where you can take sin off a little at a time. He says mortify it, kill it off. Make sure you get rid of it, which is adultery. Adultery. Adultery is the, the, the idea of worshiping idol gods. What Paul is saying to the church at Colossae here is that you have gotten to the point where you're going back into your old ways until it's pulling you back into worship. When you got something in your heart that you can't get rid of, it's just, it's just worshiping of idol gods. God says to us that he, he, he does not desire any God before him. He doesn't want any God in front of him. None of these things that are listed, we ought to put before God. That's why we fast. That's why we pray. We fast and we pray so we can get rid of the things that so easily beset us. The Hebrew writer says that when we run this race, we got to run this race with patience. In other words, don't get down on yourself because you haven't knocked it out. He says, we all struggle. We all mess up. We all fall short. But whatever you do, run this race with patience, looking ever to Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. In other words, if you have issues, you can glance at your issues, but look to Jesus. You may glance at, don't ignore the issue. Too many people are so spiritually minded until they don't want to admit that they struggle. Let me just raise my hand now and tell you I struggle. Let me just raise my hand now and tell you I mess up. Let me just raise my hand now and let you know that every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. Somebody made us a German chocolate cake and brought it to the church on Sunday. And left it with us. And we brought it home. And there's only two people in the house. And it's already gone. <laughs> German chocolate. I don't know if somebody told them. I don't know if they just thought about it. I don't know if that was just the first one they looked at. But it was a German chocolate cake. When you got German chocolate, you got German chocolate caramel on the top. <laughs> and you got chocolate around the side. You got inside this chocolate. Let me tell you, I got to get away from that. But it's a struggle for me. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're struggling with, you got to get away from it. The Bible says we got to put it to death because we don't want it to become our idol worshipers, or our idol God, where we will be idol worshipers. Verse 6, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of of disobedience, in which you yourself once walked when you were when you lived in them. What he's doing is he painting a picture of our old self, our old man. He says we once walked, we once walked in this this disobedience. We once carried ourselves because when I would when, when before I was saved, I didn't even think about what I was doing. <laughs> When I was saved, I didn't, even, I didn't even act like I was doing wrong. It didn't occur to me in my mind, nor in my heart, that wrongdoing had a payday. Mm -hmm. Paul picks this thought up again in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. He says, for the wages of sin, is, he says, for all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Then he says in, in Romans 6 and 23 that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let me just share with you. You have a reward. So you don't have to have a payday of sin. Our heyday doesn't have to come into a payday. Our heyday of what we like. And yes, our sin nature loves to sin. Just thinking about it. Boy, we just get excited about it. Just thinking about the fact that how we enjoyed it last time, we get excited about it. Paul says, put it to death so it don't become adultery. And, and idol, adultery. And he says, because uh, these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. So we have to walk in obedience. 
We have to walk with the Lord. He reminds us in verse number seven, in which you, you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. You walked that way. You dealt with it before. You lived in it before. You don't have to live in it now. Peter picks this thought up and Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 through 22, Peter says, if you turn away from unrighteousness and then you turn back to unrighteousness, you're nothing more than a hog and a dog going back to wallow in the mud and the mar that God has washed you away from and going back to lick up on the, the slop, lick up on the vomit that you just spewed up when you go back and forth in sin. He says, he says, kill this stuff off. Mortify it. Yeah. And kill it off. Leave it alone. Let it become a thing of the past. There are some things in my life, I'm trying to make them a thing of the past. Mm. There are some things, I mean, that you know that cake ought to still be here, don't you? <laughs> you know that cake now. So David's going to blame it on me, but, mm. but I know better. Some of that cake ought to still be here, but because of gluttony, because submitting to the temptation, because of yielding to sin, all that cake is gone. Mm -hmm. And it's just Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Verse number eight. <laughs> but now you yourself are to put off all these. Then he gives us another list. He says, now you yourself, not only should you put off immorality, impurities, lusts, evil desires, and greed, meaning covetousness, <laughs> you need to make sure whatever you do, you put off this list also. Look at the list. Mm -hmm. First thing on the list, put off anger. Mm -hmm. Some folks just mad at the world. Mm -hmm. If you ask them, they don't know why they're mad. They're just mad. Some, there's a man, there's an orange man that's supposed to be the most powerful man on earth. He's just mad to be mad. He's just mad because he's orange. He's just mad at the world. He's just angry. Angry, I mean, just looking for somebody to be angry with. He's, he says, put off these. One of the things is anger. And, and, you know, super Christians will tell you this. They'll say, well, the Bible says I can be angry and sin not. Mm -hmm. Paul says, put off anger. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Stop getting upset about everything. When you walk in Christ, when you walk with him, you're able to put some of those things away. Mm -hmm. Put off, put off anger. Put off. This, this, this phrase put off is, is uh, in, in biblical terms, they used to compare putting off as one would put off clothing. And what they would do is they would make sure they would take off things. And, and, and this is my demonstration for the night. It's a, it's a shirt. Now, I will tell you, this is not a nasty shirt. This is a clean shirt, but it's a shirt. And they would always compare the putting off of sin to the putting off of their clothing. So if you can use your sanctified imagination, this is a nasty, dirty, stinking shirt. But some people like to walk around in nasty, dirty, stinking shirts. Paul says, put it off. Some people love to hang out with sin. And they want to make sure that sin counts them in. Paul says, just as you would take off a filthy garment and put it in the dirty clothes and wash it, Paul says, take it off. Right. Paul says to us to get rid of anger. Amen. To get rid of anger. Some people are just angry just to be angry. He goes on to say, get rid of anger, get rid of of malice, get rid of wrath, get, get, get rid of blasphemy, get rid of filthy language. Have I called your name yet? 
Get rid of filthy language. That filthy language that's in your mouth, get rid of it. For some people, filthy language is cussing. For many people, filthy language is talking down on themselves or talking down on somebody else. Paul says, put it off. Mortify it. Get rid of it. He's told us we're, we're somebody in Christ. We ought to carry ourselves like we, we know who we are in Christ Jesus. And when we carry ourselves like we know who we are in Christ Jesus, other folk can look at us and see we are somebody in Christ Jesus. He says, mortify it. Kill it off. Anger, rage, malice. This word wrath means rage, malice, slander, filthy language. It just, they just don't fit in this Christian life. That shirt I just told you, it, it, it's, like, it's like being suited up. This ought not be the suit that a Christian puts on. In other words, it ought not be, it ought not be your wardrobe. Some people have a wardrobe of anger. Some people have a wardrobe of rage, of wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language. And when it comes to, when you look at uh, this word wrath, it's translated rage. It means it's an it's a outburst. It's an outburst of anger. It's, it's, it's like when, when one is calm and all of a sudden they explode. Is that you? You're just explosive. I mean, you're just a, a ticking time bomb. Paul says, put off that rage. Put off that outburst. And then this outburst of rage, it, it creates a situation where we are not no, we become vulnerable. We are no, no longer secure. When we, when we have this outburst or this rage, it, we are no longer secure. I used to fight growing up. I know you can't imagine that. I know you can't see that. I know you can see me now, and I'm just the nicest person you can ever find. I never, ever, ever in my life started a fight. I was cool, calm, and collected. Here we are 40 years later and a brother telling me the reason why they wanted to fight me is because when I walked in the sunlight, my glasses changed color and got dark. But I never, ever, ever started a fight. I was cool and I was smooth. I, I, I didn't bother people. But when it built up in me, it came out in an outburst. It came out and then you find people in a fit of rage. Once a person gets on that path of rage, it's hard to get them off. Some folk, and I know some people, that their eyes change color. And they, they just zone out. They're in a fit of rage. They have, they've gotten to a fit of rage. Malice. Put it off. It is, it is that that situation where you even will lie and slander on somebody. You will misuse somebody because of malice in your heart. You, you will mistreat people. For the most part, most of us are good people. If you listen to the orange man in the White House, he, he would tell you there were good people on every side, on both sides. But let me tell you, when anger takes over, People lose self-control. The wise writer says it this way in Proverbs. The wise writer says, um, he who has no control over his own spirit is like a city whose walls are torn down. When you have no control over your own spirit, you're like a city whose walls have just been torn down. We need walls outside of the city because the walls create security. The walls create protection. The walls protect the women, men, and the children. If there are no walls, then anything and anybody can come in and rape and ravish the whole city. It says when you lose control, when you lose control and you go into a, a fit of anger, you're like a city whose walls are torn down. 
People do stupid things, crazy things, when they go into a fit of rage. Paul says, get this stuff under control. Put it to death. Put it, kill it off. Says to us, this blasphemy, don't speak slander. This word blasphemy here is slander. Mm -hmm. When he talks about filthy language, keep it out your mouth. It, he, he's talking about shameful stuff abusive speech. He says, keep it out. He says, don't do it. Keep it out of your mouth. He says, don't do it. You see, bad communication corrupt good morals. Evil communication corrupt good morals. In other words, if you were trained right, if you were reared right, if you were raised right, bad communication will corrupt you. He says to us, Tonight, whatever you do, uh, Colossians chapter 3, he says to us tonight, whatever you do, verse number 8 says to us, keep filthy communication out your mouth. Yes. It says kill it off. Just let it go. Let it go. You know, they cuss you. You don't have to cuss them. It says keep it out your mouth. The Christian should not be one who lies. Look at verse number 9. Do not lie to one another. <laughs> Do not lie to one. Tell the truth. One thing, one thing, one thing we were brought up doing, we were made to tell the truth. We wouldn't think about lying. Made to tell the truth. You know you're going to get it anyway. You might as well tell the truth and get it over with because it's going to be much more devastating if you don't tell the truth. I remember Mama coming home one day, and Miss Betty Lou still lives next door, and uh, she told my Mama I did something. And I said, no, no, that wasn't me. She said, oh, Miss Betty lying, huh? It's one thing you didn't do. when In my age, you did not call grown people lies. You did not say you wouldn't ever fix your mouth to say an adult told a lie. Matter of fact, we would not even... Uh, given the ability to use the word lie or hell. We couldn't use those words. We, we couldn't use those words in the presence of any adult. Verse number nine, Colossians chapter, chapter three, verse number nine, do not lie to one another. Mm -hmm. Since you have put off the old man with its deeds. We ought to be able to put off the old man and when, then we ought to put off the old man deeds. In other words, the things that we used to do, we ought not do anymore. Yes. I used to hear the testimony of the saints, and they would say, I looked at my hands, and my hands looked new. And I looked at my feet, and they did too. And that, as a boy, I'm sitting back looking at all these old folks saying, your hand was wrinkled yesterday, and they wrinkled today. But what they were saying was not that their hands changed in the way they were wrinkled. Their hands didn't change in the way they looked. Their feet didn't change in the way they looked. What they were saying was the places I used to go with my feet, I don't go anymore. The things I used to do with my hands, I, didn't, I don't do them anymore. And then my hands and my feet are the way they are because of my heart. I'm a new man. My hands do what they do because of my heart. My feet do what they do because of my heart. My actions, my deeds are what they are because of my brain and my mind. Men are led astray by their own selfless desires, by their own sinful desires. We are led astray by our own sinful desires. There are three entities that are the most. It used to be two. Now it's three today. There, there used to be God and the devil was the most lied on beings in, that have ever existed. Now it's God, the devil, and Corona. COVID-19. They are the three most lied on entities that has ever existed. Because somebody is looking for a reason to say something or somebody made me do it. Flip Wilson used to say as Geraldine, the devil made me do it. We can't say the devil made us do it. 
The Bible teaches that we are led astray by our own selfish and sinful desires. He says, keep your mind on things that are above. Stay in the word. Walk with Jesus. Put away the old man and the old things. He says to us today, put off the old man in the old man's deeds. Paul says in Romans chapter 7, every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. That which I would do is what I do not do. That which I do do is what I chose not to do. And he says, I see a war going on in me. Every time my spiritual self leads me to do something right, my physical fleshly self leads me to do something wrong. This thing was so heavy on Paul until Paul says in verse number 24, Paul says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this death? He says, oh, wretched man, oh, beaten down man, oh, burdensome man. Oh, beaten up man, oh, burdened man, who going to deliver me from this sinful death? If the great apostle Paul had a struggle, let me tell you today, baby, you got a struggle. Brother, you got a struggle. I may not know it. They may not know it. Your pastor may not know it, but you have something that you're struggling with. Paul says, oh, wretched man that I am, Romans chapter 7, verse 24, he said, who shall deliver me from this awful death that I'm living in? He gets to verse number 25, and I thank God for verse number 25. Because I, like Paul, struggle too. <laughs> I, like Paul, is going up and down also. He says in verse number 25, I thank God. Through Jesus Christ, I can defeat this thing. I thank God that Jesus Christ has given me what it takes for me to defeat this. I thank God the Christ in me makes me who I am. The Christ in me turns things around for me. The Christ in me, in this new man that I have put on, it makes me turn my back away from sin. See, what Paul was doing, he was painting a picture to them at this time because when a man was killed by another man in Paul's day, they will strap the dead man onto the back, onto the shoulders of the man who killed him. They will strap the dead man onto the back of the murderer. And everywhere he went, the dead man went with him. The dead man, the dead man went to breakfast with him. The dead man went to bed with him. The dead man went to the restroom with him. The dead man went to school with him. The dead man went to church with him. Until the dead man's bacteria will eat into the flesh of the live man. And that dead man's bacteria will kill the live man. Yes. If you murder somebody, they would strap the dead man to your back. And the bacteria from the dead man will kill off the live man. Paul paints this picture in Romans chapter 7. And he says, somebody needs to deliver me from this awful death. And he said, I thank God. Jesus Christ, he has come to deliver me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. He says that, that you got to put off this dead man with his deeds and put on. Now, when, what we have to understand, if we take something off, we got to put something on. If we say no, we got to say yes to something. You remember the statement, I think it was uh, Nancy Reagan that said she had a plea against drugs and alcohol, and she said, just say no. The problem with that theory is, if you say no to drugs, you got to say yes to Jesus. Yeah. Whenever you're going to say no to something, whenever, rather, you're going to say no to something, you got to say yes to something else. Because you got to have something in that place. It's good to say no, but you got to say yes to something. And I recommend Jesus. Verse number 10, he says, And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. He says, we have been renewed. We are a new man. Put on the new man. 
This new man has been renewed in knowledge. Mm -hmm. This new man has new revelation from God. You see, as an old man, as a natural man, we cannot hear God. The only thing that the spirit can speak to a natural man is salvation. You see, the natural man does not, does not experience, does not understand, does not come to the conclusion of what spirituality is really all about because he or she is natural. They just like they were when they were born. They're natural. They have no connection with God because sin separate us from God. We can't get to God. God can't get to us. But Jesus bridges a gap between God and man. Jesus, the late Pastor Manson Johnson used to demonstrate it like this. He said that, that Jesus reached up and caught the holy hand of God. And he reached down and caught the unholy hand of man. And he brought a bitter dispute to a happy ending. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus can do it. Yes. Confucius can't do it. Muhammad can't do it. Only Jesus can do it. Yes. Aristotle can't do it. Only Jesus can do it. Jesus reaches up because he's just as much God as God. He reaches down because he's just as much man as man and brings a bitter dispute to a happy ending. Jesus is the only one who can do it. Verse number 10, it says, put on the new man. See, we can't even put on the new man on our own. We need Jesus. We can't put on the new man on our own because every time we would to do good, evil is present with us. This new man has, has renewed knowledge. And this renewed knowledge is, is according to the, the image of him who created him. This new knowledge is about God, the creator himself. We ought to, we ought to sanctify ourselves by reading and studying the word. We ought, to, we ought to saturate our hearts and our mind with the word of God. Yes, Lord. We ought to make sure that we look for the image that's in Jesus, the image that's in the Holy Spirit, the image that's in God, and make sure that this image is in us and other folks see the image of God in us, mm -hmm. walking with him, talking with him, acting out in him. Our actions are in him. Our deeds are in him. Our carrying on is in him. You see, a lot of people think, think Christians, Christians can't have fun. They, they think that we're just walking around and singing kumbaya and, and holding our hands up toward the air and the whole putting our heads into the sand while the whole wor world passes us by. Christians have to have fun. They have to be engaged. They, they have to let down the head sooner or later. But even your having fun ought to be in Christ Jesus. God who created us. Verse number 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all in all. Let me unpack that for you. You see, in Christ Jesus, we, we are neither Greek or Jew. In other words, God is not one who respects us because of our nationality. God does not uh, call upon us to be his because we were born to a particular nation or a particular culture. Then he says, neither are we, he, he's interested in blessing the, the circumcised more than the uncircumcised. Paul corrected that theory back in chapter 2 of Colossians, where he says that you don't have to be physically circumcised, but you must be spiritually circumcised. So he doesn't, does not, he does not hold one over the other because he or she is circumcised. He says, neither Greek nor Jew, neither circumcised or uncircumcised, 
Not even barbarians does he look down on. Barbarians. Those who were wild. Scythians. Scythians. They, these are, are those who were savage nomads, who were slaves. Those who were, were at an economic or social distinction. God does not distinguish his salvation, his sanctification, nor his glorification based on your nationality, based on where you were born. Neither does he base it on your culture. Neither does he base it on whether you are a savage nomad or a civilized being. You see, the fact of the matter is, once we become born again, once we are saved, there are no barriers in Jesus Christ. For Jesus is all and is in all. He, these natural distinctions that men have built up because of our economic standard, status, if your 401k got more than mine in it, God doesn't look at it that way. Whether you were born in America or born somewhere else, God doesn't look at it that way. There are no barriers, for Jesus has destroyed these barriers. Mm -hmm. When you become a believer, everybody stands on equal grounding. Yes. It sickens me to see the educated trying to look down on the uneducated. It sickens me when one who gets just enough seminary to be dangerous look down on one that's not a seminarian. It sickens me when one who has money looks down on one who does not. Yeah. It is our responsibility to know that Jesus Christ is inclusive of all. Yes. It also sickens me when we look, at, look down on other people because their sins are different than ours. Did you hear me? I said their sins are different. That means we all got them. We, we all mess up. We all fall short. But there are people who will look down on others because they don't have what they have. Matter of fact, I don't have what you have because I'm not going to do what you did to get it. They asked me to be on the school board for Fort Bend ISD. I said, no, I can't do it. Because the fact of the matter is, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to speak my mind, and that ain't going to work. They did ask me to pray. I said, well, you want me to pray? Yeah, I want you to pray. Now, when you pray, don't pray in Jesus' name. I said, do you, do you really want me to pray? <laughs> yeah, we want you to pray. I said, do you believe I can get a prayer through? Yeah, we want you to pray. School board. Bunch of folk there, a bunch of high saluting people there. Now, whatever you do, don't pray in Jesus' name. I said, you want me to pray? Mm -hmm. Well, I knew I wasn't going to pray again anyway. Hello. So uh, they said, don't pray in Jesus' name. So when I began my prayer, I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I, I glorify you in the name of Jesus. I, I bless your name in the name of Jesus. Here it is, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we have met here to meet and to talk about business. I pray that you bless us in the name of Jesus. For some reason, they haven't asked me to pray again. It's because we have to get to a point in our lives where we live out our own salvation and we live it out with fear and trembling to the Lord and not to man. Because Jesus has set the slaves free. <laughs> Jesus, the Christ, is all and he is in all. Fact of the matter is, you got to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, and once you receive Him, He's available to you. Mm -hmm. He's available to you. Don't be afraid of man who can take your life, your physical life. Be afraid of God who be respectful of Him. Be afraid of the God who can take not only your physical life but your spiritual life. Right. Walk with Him. Paul says to this church at Colossae, whatever you do. Walk in the newness of Christ. Amen. Walk with God. He, he says, live for the Lord. Put away sin and live for him. 
Be a living testimony that God can brag on you as he has bragged on Job, as he brags on Jesus. He says, he says of Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. Have to make sure that we put all the sinful practices away and live according to our new self. Mm -hmm. Live according to the Christ that's in us. Walk with him and watch he protects us. Walk with him and watch he be our real God and our front God. Stay with him. We're in the midst of a bad pandemic. Stay with Jesus. Be one who lives for him. I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm just like Paul. If I die, it's a benefit. Because if I die, I go to be with the Lord. If I live, it's a benefit because as I live, I'm going to live unto the Lord. If I suffer, it's a benefit because I understand one thing. This present day suffering is not to be compared to the glory that is yet to be revealed in Christ Jesus. I win. Will you win today? The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. My question to you, are you a winner? You can only win through Jesus Christ. The door is open. The invitation is extended. If you never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know this Jesus we talk about. This Jesus we preach about. This Jesus we teach about. You can get to know him tonight. All you have to do is just trust the story. That over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you and he died for me. I tell you, mean men took him. They beat him. They put him through an unjust court. They killed him. They laid Jesus in a borrowed tomb. Early that third day morning, Jesus rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He rose for you and he rose for me. I say to you tonight, you can be saved right here, right now, where you are on the air. You can be saved. Just believe the story that he died. He was buried. He rose again. I'm going to pray, pray and lead you in prayer and ask you to repeat after me. And invite Jesus Christ into your life to be your personal Savior. And he will do it. Will you repeat after me? Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. We believe if you prayed that prayer, we believe that you're born again. If you die tonight, if you die anytime in the future, you're going to heaven when you die. For you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. There may be some listening to me today and you're saved and know that you are. But for some reason or the other, you're in between churches. Or you do not have a church home. Or you're not sure about the church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church. Whether you're in Houston or outside of Houston, I recommend New Beginning Church. Where Jesus is the center of attention. Where Jesus is the main attraction. Please message me, inbox me, and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. And we'll be glad to have you and rejoice with you. We welcome you. If you're listening to us and you need prayer, we recommend that you inbox me or, or message me and let me know you need prayer. Many have, have been offered prayer after our broadcast. Please let me know that you need prayer. We'll be glad to pray with you and pray for you. We're praying for those who, who are suffering from COVID-19. We're praying for those whose family members are suffering. 
COVID-19. We're praying for the sick and the bereaved. We're praying for, for marriages to be restored and individuals' minds to be healed. We're praying for our nation. We're praying for our world. We're praying for our leadership. We're praying that God saves even the evil man. We're praying that God has his way in our lives. Please join me in prayer and be a part of our prayer time. It is now offering time. It's time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. And you can do so by three means. First of all, you can, you can give by way of cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Cash tag or dollar sign NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as Jesus is lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. Or you can mail your offering to P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459 Please ma'am, please sir, you can volunteer to give by any of these three means. Let me say thank you for joining us here tonight at the New Beginning Church from our remote location. Uh, 7.20 p.m. every Wednesday night we'll be here for Bible study. Uh, also, join us on, on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school and on Sunday morning at 10.45 a.m. for our worship service. Please feel free to join us because we want to, to pour into your life and, and watch God do great things through you and, and with you. Please continue to lift up uh, everybody who's affected. And many have been affected. Uh, even Houston, Texas, Mississippi is on the uptick. We want to pray for all those who, who, are, who are in leadership, who will make proper decisions and make decisions that are wise. I say to you, wear your mask. Keep your distance. Wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer. Make sure that you make reasonable calls that make good sense. I never thought we would have to give a commercial after Bible study or a Sunday worship that we would tell people to make sure you follow the science. We want to make sure that we bring this level back down again. So the sooner we bring it down, the sooner we can get back to some kind of normalcy where we can shake hands again, love on each other again, and Praise the Lord again. Until that time, we want to make sure that we stay safe and use wisdom. Uh, a great holiday is coming up for Thanksgiving. I'm saying to you, be careful. Be wise. Make sure that you stay safe. Follow science. The more I study science, the more I realize that God is real. Einstein would say if he was here that the more he gets involved in science, the more he understands about God. So please, ma'am, please, sir, follow the science. Make sure you stay with, stay with Jesus. Here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you that we are special in Jesus. We thank you, God, that you've given us all we need to put the old man behind us and live and put on the new man. Bless us, Lord, as we move forth, that we would put on love. We would put on the peace of God. 
and that we will be thankful for what God is doing. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, and God keep you is our prayer.